welcome to Face the Facts. It's great to have everybody here once again. Happy holidays to everybody. It is Looneyville around here. This is the week prior to Christmas, so I'm sure everybody is out of their minds right now, kind of like I am. I'm always out of my mind, but it is what it is. We have uh, Chris Kringle uh, in the house, Tom Smith, and we have uh, his elf, uh, Phil Healy, <laughs> zooming in on the computer right there. Buddy the elf up in the uh, left-hand corner. Welcome in, everybody. Howdy. Everybody speak. I gave them such a great introduction, and they don't want it. Yeah, thanks. Any, any accolades? <laughs> no, for the show. Then fine, Phil. I was going to start with the Celtics because I know how much you love them. You know, we'll just start with the oh, well, yeah. We are going to start with the Celtics today because there was um, some news this afternoon that Joe Johnson, the big time vet around here for in the in the NBA, um, has signed a ten day contract with the Celtics. So he will be in action this evening in their game. Overall take. Overall take, Phil. What do you think? Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? It's funny. I think he already <laughs> contracted COVID. Oh, did, oh is he already? I, I think he already. News? I think he already did. Oh, uh, God. There's a, a CBS report from 37. News. Well, there's a 37. Yeah. yeah, from 37 minutes ago. And IT as well, because I know you brought him up Yeah. Uh, originally. But yeah, they say, yeah. I guess they just signed him, and I think he might have. Well, maybe not. Uh, no, Joe Johnson. Yeah. Joe jo no, nothing. Oh, he's no, no, they're not. They're not. I'm no, sorry. He's they're good. not. He's playing. They're good. Yeah, he's they're good. all right. They can't, they're keeping it clean. I thought it would be as, pretty as hilarious. The world turns in this land with everything. As the world turns, yep, he is in action tonight. Um, is he starting? That's what you said? Yeah, he's going to be starting, too. That's bizarre to me. Woj bomb. Uh, oh, Woj. Uh, Wojnowski. Woj I thought it was actual, like, yeah. that's a dirty bomb from yeah. Wojnowski, Woj which bomb. I'm sure he could be capable of creating one. Yeah. He, he was in the, the poop in Vietnam, I think. He was in it. Woj, him and, well, him and Shotgun I, I and like, Penny. I like this move here for the Celtics of a veteran presence coming in with everything. But the one thing that still gets on my nerves is the fact what? that Isaiah Thomas was passed up on, passed up upon again by the Celtics to bring him back, bring him back home. So it leads me to believe something more happened with this whole Isaiah Thomas when he was traded with Kyrie and everything around um, that, that time with Danny Ainge. You know, Danny yeah. Ainge is no longer with the Celtics. He's with um, the Utah Jazz now. He's their uh, president of ops over there. So something's up with that. They continue to keep passing on him. I think the fans would absolutely gravitate to that signing and welcome him back with open arms. But now he's with the Lakers and everything. So a little surprised on this. Yeah, I'm with you. And I guess Marcus Smart was running his mouth about how he tried to get him here uh which whatever you want to take that as him kind of brow uh, him kind of oh, uh, showboating problem with him so i mean sure and i actually i like him a lot but i also i can also like him and also dislike a lot of his play sometimes when he goes crazy um but yeah i think it would have been great to have it here but yeah the history here is we gave up on him uh we traded him for kyrie irving for at the time who wasn't going to trade it for kyrie irving um but I mean, I guess people in Cleveland knew why uh, that was <laughs> like we took that curse. But also, he won them a championship, so they should shut up. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. And he also like listen when he that last playoff run when they went to the conference finals for the first time in a while. He what was it? I believe his. I believe it was his sister that died, or was, like he went through a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, he like, had that big game after his sister had died and everything. And a car accident. And really? I think her. Yeah. It's like. Other, yeah, like other family members were in there, like either uh, crazily injured and, and, you know, one, I think, I know his sister passed. And he also had like dent, emergency dental surgery. Do you remember that? I remember and that he had, too. like, he put himself on the line for that team. And I, I, I around the league. I mean, you got to yeah. respect that big time. Oh, of course. Give them everything. And they didn't, uh, you know, they didn't respond in kind, I guess. Danny wasn't as... Um, uh, it wasn't, it didn't reflect it or didn't show that same courtesy to him. And they kind of dumped him when uh, the Kyrie Irving uh, deal came, which I, I'll i say this, you can't really blame him for it. You do that Kyrie trade nine, nine times out of, I mean, you do it every time. Yeah. You just do. I mean, nobody knew the you know, the bag of crap that Kyrie was going to bring with him, but. No, and even, listen, if Kyrie played well all the time and it worked and he was that kind of weirdo bag of crap, then we would have been a little bit more forgiving. 
you don't have to like no. the guy per se, but I mean, like, you know, wins speak louder, but he's still yeah. going to go down as one of the most toxic athletes. That's been a part of a Boston. Team. He can't play in New York. He can't play in his he hometown. Yep. Well, it's they're the considering he, they possibly can. They were, he was possibly going to play on the road with them as a, you know, as a bit player, but then he got COVID and then that was the end of it. What goes around comes yeah. around. Well, and listen, I back to the IT just briefly. Yeah, they uh, people around the league. Anthony Davis, AD, had said it. Like his father had said, like, why would Anthony want to go to the Celtics after what they did to IT? So that's on everyone's mind. That's on every player's mind. Danny Ainge is out. But, you know, maybe you still have that sink. And, you know, maybe they did try to get IT. Maybe IT just passed on it or just didn't want to go. And, you know, I remember one of my favorite quotes – Maybe this will explain Jalen Brown and his, like, maybe his feelings with the NBA, his second year, because he was there the first year. He's a rookie when <clears throat> IT was still around. Yep. When he was traded for Kyrie, uh, I remember in an interview, he said something like, <clears throat> like, I, you know, I thought this was IT's team. I guess it's Kyrie's now or something. Or like, like a bitter, kind of like a bitter statement about that whole thing, about like the business of it. And just like, what are we doing here? Which uh, that spoke volumes to me, and I had a little bit more respect for him because he kind of like, you know, what do you, how cold do you got to be? But yeah, but that's a whole nother bag of bones. So look for Joe Johnson. You know, he'll be a new addition there for the Celtics in their upcoming games now, and uh, we wish them the best. Um, I do want to transition over to the Bruins. Tom's got his hat and I think shirt or something on that has to do with the Bruins. No, that's the sports on sweatshirt. I should know that. Sorry. Um, I am still on that same path with the Bruins of being very concerned on things. But now the whole rest of the NHL is shut down because of this virus. And I think it's more, it's not just an NHL topic to, to discuss on this whole, uh, this whole problem that's happening with players testing positive and everything like this or not having symptoms of it. Thing in. I want to open it up to the whole, the whole spectrum of baseball and uh, hockey and basketball, football, all that jazz. So I want to ask you guys the question. If a professional athlete has been vaccinated and he, or, you know, or she or whatever it would be, comes down with some sort of a positive case of whether it's Omicron, COVID, whatever the heck it is, and has no symptoms do they have to sit out or 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 do they deserve to be going into this protocol thing and kind of wrecking everybody's seasons in a way so let me go to tom first you can talk about it more in an nhl system as well too because before we even talk about this 98 percent of nhl players are vaccinated right now just so we know the statistics on that so, I think it's. I think the NHL is the safest professional league in in the country right now, honestly, or on this right. continent, I should say. Um, they, I, I think they went about it the right way. Uh, I think, surprisingly, they have the smartest players. <sighs> Anything else you want to add? I don't know if you froze. I, yeah, I froze. So, and, and they, they seem to have the more intelligent players um, wanting to get vaccinated and everything. Um, every, I, it seems like every athlete that doesn't want to get vaccinated is not really doing it for any particular reason. Um, and th- I mean, this is kind of a touchy subject everywhere, but <clears throat> I think, a player, even if they don't have symptoms, if they've tested positive, they should at least quarantine for 10 days. Um, they, I mean, whether you have symptoms or not, you shouldn't be playing. You, you tested positive. That's a good take, Tom. Phil? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. listen, if you test positive, you're there. Uh, it's all about community, uh, it being transferring the virus, whether you are uh showing all the symptoms or not if you have it you know if you go through the protocols of having x amount of tests and you're you're clean that's one thing but if you you have it and you're asymptomatic 
That just means you can pass it on to someone else. It, it's good for you. It's, it, you know, I'm glad you're okay. And you don't, you don't feel the, uh, the effects that someone who really could be hurting uh, by it, but yeah. Yeah, like the underlying, the underlying condition people is where you got to really be careful with. I think with yeah. because majority of, you know, Tom, probably yourself, Phil, me, you know, if we had it from whatever thing, we, we would most likely 99% of the time recover from whatever we would have from it. And I have to look at that uh, from a professional athlete standpoint and say, these are some of the most in shape players or uh, most in shape people around the, around the world. And if they're having symptoms of a, you know, a sore throat and a cold and everything, and they can recover from it, I think we have to move forward here in this world. Otherwise, we're putting up roadblocks on everything here. You know, the, the great thing that we have that we didn't have last year is this vaccination. If these so-called experts are claiming that if you are vaccinated with everything and you can recover from it, I, I say you got to play. I, I, I say you got to play. I'm going to take that stance and say it's interrupted so much in this world. I know so many people are absolutely sick and tired of this life we're living. I'm one of them. But you got to be safe about it. You know, for the people that have underlying conditions and everything, you know, my heart goes out to you because this, this is a tough, tough battle to have to face with everything. I understand it completely. I lost my mother, you know, during the worst bit of this whole thing when it opened up last March and all whether she passed from it I st we st still don't know but the major thing that I look at from a sports profession at least professional side at least is if you have done what has been told to do and you are doing all those things to keep yourself safe and everything suit up play if you're really sick then you're out of the game you know but to have to do this for 10 days and miss multiple games from all of that then, then it gets, then you roll the dice here with me. And I just say to myself, especially with the NHL with it, it's like, you know what, you know, I, if all these players come down with it and everything and they can recover and they feel okay, get on the ice and go. Well, here's my counterpoint. What, what happens if they do have a sore throat and they have a runny nose or whatever, they have some of the symptoms and they don't quarantine for 10 days and then half your team goes down with it. Kind of like what the Bruins are going through right now, correct? Yep. Or even so not even you, just the team. Then the league has to step in, you know, what, because I think you, they've left it open a lot to these teams to kind of dictate what they want to do with certain protocols and stuff. The NHL then stepped in and said, we're going to postpone all your games until at least December 26th to see how everybody recovers and everything like that. So, so I think if – more teams come down with what you saw. I think the NHL stands, stance was great. But when you individualize one particular team and everybody else is still going in and all that, that's not fair, in my opinion. Yeah, but so would you take that one player off the ice for the 10 days or would you take half the team and then have to postpone the rest of the year? Well, right now I look at it and say to myself, I guess the Bruins made the right choice, but case in point, Brad Marchand came down with it. And look what happened when they can, they still continued to play. They look like shit. So part of me wishes they just shut down as soon as Marchand got sick, because then it starts impacting games and your season gets, you know, you can be completely out of a playoff run or a Stanley Cup run or whatever the heck it is, because an individual, maybe even an individual superstar style player who has that much of an impact on your team goes down and crushes everything. That, that, that's where it gets really complicated. There's really no right way or wrong way with it. But I do agree with all these other teams kind of getting it from everything with the NHL. They made the right choice on stopping it until they have a better understanding of where everyone's going to be recovering from at that standpoint. Um, Football, I think football, I, you know, th th that one's more of a mess, in my opinion, than it is with the NHL, because they're still going and stuff. My biggest thing here is the Patriots, knock on wood, have not really been impacted by this right now. If this comes down and say it's Mac Jones, 
say Mac Jones is out, he gets COVID and everything. And that interrupts a start right there. Say he comes down with it today and he can't play against Buffalo. That screws Hoyer. them royally, doesn't it? Well, uh, listen, I'm a Hoyer guy, as we all know. <laughs> um, <laughs> six touchdowns, one Joe's game. playing devil's advocate today. Uh, no, I, yeah, no, I, listen, I'm with you. And I'm, I, I think Tom's right too. And not even just the players themselves, but think about everyone around the team. Like it's just, it's not necessarily, you know, you're, it's tough. It's tough because like, if everyone were vaccinated, you'd be like, yeah, or enough. And I don't know if enough people are vaccinated. I, I think, I hope we're getting to that point. I think we are. And I think this is going to be in the rearview mirror sooner than later. I know we keep hearing that, but I mean, I think that's a reasonable thing. And, and the thing that's actually good about this new variant is, I mean, it, it's not good that it's highly communicable, but it's great that it's not as dangerous, it seems. Yes. And if you're boosted and if you're, if you're vaccinated, that works. And if you're boosted, that's even better. So, I mean, this, this gives you more incentive to be like, hey, just do what we need to do? Because I don't think it's going away per se. And I, I agree with your sentiment, Nick, that we have to deal with it. We have to learn to live with it. But I also uh, think we also have to know, like, oh, you know, we can't, like, like Tom says, you know, if you don't deal with something right away, it'll turn into a b- much bigger issue, like, down the road. And that, not just for the team, but for everyone around the team. And you don't know. You want to be that guy that kills, you know, Gary, the trainer, who's been here for 30 years? There you go. That's a great point right there. I'm vaccinated, and, I, you know, I can't speak for the rest of everybody that's there, but I knew that in order for myself and the people that I'm around to not have to worry about me giving them something, I, I – didn't want to be that selfish kind of person. I wanted to do what I felt was right. And I think a lot of athletes still are fighting it, whether they want it or not. And that that's where there's a lot of people that don't have an understanding about it. Like I understand completely if somebody is against it and doesn't know what foreign subject or something that they put or foreign object they're putting into this. I get that. I get the people that don't want, but I needed to make sure that I was did the unselfish like thing for myself, my team, my store, all that stuff that I had. Case in point goes to these athletes. You know, I'll put Kyrie Irving on the spot. And why not? You know, we always love the crap on him, but there's one particular person that doesn't want it, won't get it. And he's significantly impacted the Brooklyn Nets. He has. But it's his God given right to determine what he wanted to do. You know, if a team is going through all this and there's certain individuals don't want it, you have to think about, am I going to be an unselfish person and do something for the sake of my organization? There's a lot of people that aren't thinking that way. And that's when it starts to impact not just yourself, but your team or any other individual that you're surrounding yourself with. So I don't, this is not to turn political on it. We don't do that here. Everybody has the right, God-given right to decide whatever they want. Us on a, a, on a debate and conversational piece here, seeing what it's done to professional sports, at least in the past week or two, I mean, it absolutely deserved the, uh, the conversation here today. Yeah, and it's also like I, people bring up like politics, quote unquote. And I'm sorry for being that d bag who uses the air quote thing, but no, it's not. It's just listen. This is <laughs> this is a real thing. Yeah, that you need. We need to deal with no matter what you feel the origins or whatever backstory you have or heard from your uncle. It's just like you need to. You know, this is real. It deals with real people, and it's it's. it's just, isn't it crazy? We're still dealing with this back from March of twenty. It's still. It's just. It's. I. I never could have imagined something yeah. like this. I don't think any of you thought, in your wildest dreams, we'd still be living this still. So I, I know we were yeah. talking about the the Bruins, and we were talking about hockey. And we kind of, you know, made it more. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. But I mean, it, it kind of brings up a good transition to the Patriots because uh, this oh. weekend. The, their opponent, the Bills, are going to be missing a key piece of their offense um, due to oh, not that's being right. vaccinated. That's uh, right. Cole, uh, Cole, Cole Beasley. Beasley. That's right. He and he proudly. Yeah. Uh, and he's, was, I mean, that, right, right reason, off the bat right there, you know, yeah. for Buffalo fans, I'm sure they're furious right now. 
Uh, no, they're actually backing him. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, there goes the mafia for you. Yeah, there you go. There goes your season. But to, yeah. there's an impactful player being removed because of, you know, the virus and everything. And fair or not, I mean, it's not, it's not really the same team if you don't have all those individuals out there that are battling it out, trying to win that championship and all. So it's just the sign of the times and what we're living. It's just, again, it's just, it blows my mind with how things have progressed. I will say glimmer of hope here and good news as we transition out of this uh, little segment that we're on here. I don't know if any of you saw the report today out of, um, oh, what the heck is the hospital? Walter Reed Hospital, thank you, that said that they have, they are just about to release the information about um, the strain, I guess they've been developing for two years since everything came out with uh, COVID and everything, that they have a vaccine now that looks like that can, up, that can cure all the COVID concerns with everything. So I don't know if you saw that, that was on my Oh, like every Twitter, every trace of it? Twitter feed with everything. Let me see if I can find that article again. A cure all. Walter Reed. This just in on Face the Facts. This just in. The Walter Reed vaccine, they're calling it. Uh, also, I, if I would go to football again, with, uh, is Kendrick Bourne on the COVID list too? I thought I remember saying he was, that. Yeah, I believe he, was. he is. Yes. But is it, so um, Walter sure Reed scientists expect sure to announce that they have developed a vaccine that protects people from COVID-19 and all its variants even Omicron. It's from the U.S. Army um, that created the single vaccine, which will be effective against all COVID SARS variants. Cool. So does that mean that our Johnson and Johnson's and our Pfizer and our Moderna shots that we got, were they pointless? No, I don't think so. Do you, th do you think it was pointless to protect yourself? Uh... No, I mean, pointless being that we have something else that's coming out here that I'm sure... You know, the government's going to step might, in and say, oh, hey, we we didn't mean to really, you know, give you something that was so uh, short term. We have the long term solution here now. Everybody's got to get this now. Well, I mean, think about this way. They Again, you're going to dealing... be playing games again with people. Oh, well, why did you tell us before that oh, we I... could have this and then we have this now? You know, that, that's what I'm Yeah, I'm I guess. But I mean, like, like if, devil's and, advocate in a way. Sure, sure. And just to answer that, I think people, I mean, it's just like anything else like we have to deal with something in the now in the present and then prepare for the future and if something i mean it you know just like anything that uh has op obsolescence anything that becomes obsolete or just is you know you have all these variants come out you have to like for the flu you have to do it annually not everyone does it for the flu it gets a no, flu shot or whatever no. uh but you know as you get older and you know whatever your immunity crumbles a bit or whatever you do if you're a heavy smoker or anything then like that crumbles yeah i mean your body will fall apart as is the passage of time relays but yeah no i don't if it's if it's something that works then it, it's there and it's uh better for you and i'm sure i'm sure moderna and jj uh, you know whomever the powers that be other pharmaceutical giants will try to one-up that so you're looking at a vaccine arms race which might be good or bad depending on how you look at it but yeah we we totally talk nick out of his chair Sorry, He's back. The, dog, the dog was chewing a volleyball bag. Can't do that. <laughs> no, time for lunch. Um, as we were with the NHL with everything, Tom, so I, we know the Bruins have stopped up until I think it's the 26th from everything. Yep. Pretty much the entire team has either symptoms or not having symptoms of being close contacts and all that stuff. With COVID and everything. It still is causing me concern still with this team, their identity, where things are going to look for from everything. As of this moment, I'm counting them out of the playoffs. I am. And it's going to be, a, I don't like to use the word blow up, but I think the team, I think we're on the last legs of the Bergeron and, and, and all that looking at, looking at it right now. I think this could be it. I also yeah, think, again, I wouldn't be surprised to talk about it in the last show that if you see, um, David Pasternick dealt and see him out of here at some point, something or, or Cassidy, like we talked about last time, I, they got to make some move. I, I'm probably going to say they're going to get rid of Cassidy before a Pasternick, but 
I, I don't like what I see with this team right now. I don't. They don't look like the same Bruins that they've been. And I think that this has a lot to do, unfortunately. And I like the guy. I think this is a Cassidy thing right now. I think he's not getting the most out of his players. And I think that his system right now, it seems like it's just not working with this young crew. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Younger, actually, crazy. older crew. I didn't mean to say young. It's old. He doesn't like young young blood for the most part. I I don't. Oh, it could be oh. mixed. But I'm looking at like a Studnicka or a Frederick or people like that, that you expected them to be more impactful and they aren't, they're not doing anything. I don't know if it's really, if it's, if the, that call is coming from him because we have to remember that he came, um, they, they brought him up from in the, inside the system from uh, the Providence Bruins. He was the head coach down there in Providence. They brought him up to be the head coach of the Bruins, and I don't really think he's got the call right now. That's a valid point. On who to start and who to put in the lineup. Um, so is that a Sweeney thing or a Neely thing? I, it, I, I don't know. I, it could be. It could be a discussion between the three of them. Um, but I don't know if I don't know if Cassie really has the final say. Um, but I also. I also want to add too that it's going to be interesting with all these postponements um, to see how the rest of the season ends up with the scheduling and everything. It could work in the Bruins' favor given the fact that Rask looks to be coming back sooner than people thought. And that, like I said on the last program we did, that could be a spark that's really needed. Could be. Could be. So it'll be interesting to see how we'll, we'll see how things there. look after Christmas with hopefully them returning back to action. Hopefully this week off or whatever it's been will be the best thing that they've ever had. And they just are rejuvenated and different flow of energy and a different, different team that we see out there on the ice. So I'll keep yeah, I'm, crossed on that. I'm hoping, I'm hoping they get back to action after Christmas. I'm supposed to be going to the new year's day game. So. Those are always fun when they do those. Yeah, I've been to those a few times over the years. I want to jump to the Patriots next because that clunker on Saturday night against the Colts, Tom was right. I first want to say, I know he's got his arms up and everything. And he said that don't be surprised if the Colts and everything come and surprise you and get the win. I first want to say that that I was- I think we all said, well, Nick was the only one. I was the only one. Oh, you did too, Phil. I'm sorry. We did. No, but Tom was, Tom was, I think he was dead on. Right. What did you, Tom, what exactly did you say? Um, I said, well, I wouldn't be surprised with the Patriots coming off a of bye week that they won't play as well as they have been and that the Colts mm -hmm. are going to be a tough matchup and make a game of it. And they made a game of it. There you go. It was a game for the most part that, you were getting zero, zero production on the offensive side. Matt, uh, Mac Jones looked very, very bad for the majority of the game. I do give him credit for keeping them close within this game, uh, especially in the fourth quarter. You know, they had that chance to win. They had a chance to win. They had a chance to win, and they pretty much just choked it away. It was a very unpatriot-like game. The penalties that were made on the defensive end, especially on special teams, we had punts that were blocked and returned for touchdowns, just a straight up pile of slop, I will say. I am concerned now heading, in, uh, heading into Buffalo for this game right after Christmas, I'm not going to lie. I think that, yeah, we're at home, but I think Buffalo is probably pretty ticked about the game they had Monday night when it was freezing cold and everything. And I would now not be surprised if Buffalo gives the Patriots a kick in the ass. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. So I'm not going to say I, I, it's going to be a Patriots win here. I actually think it's probably going to be a Buffalo win here and a Patriots loss again. And then that's going to leave us with still to go Jacksonville and Miami. And 
it's going to be up for grabs on who's going to be the, your division uh, your division winner here. Patriots might sneak in as a wild card team, but I think they're going to choke this division away. That's my stance. Tom shaking his head. Go ahead, Tom. He was right before. Will he be right again? I completely disagree. Okay. Um, I think what we what we saw this past weekend against the Colts uh, was a team that came into a game that they could have and should have won uh, and were completely unprepared after a bye week. And Bill's going to be pissed. And he's going to get his team ready for the game this weekend against Buffalo. And the Buffalo, like I said earlier, Buffalo's missing a key piece to their offense. And I think the Patriots are going to absolutely steamroll them. You know, I don't other, like it sometimes when Tom's pending. right on things. I just, you know, sometimes I don't. But in this case, I hope he is right. I want to be wrong. So please make me wrong. That's all I ask. Um, Phil, what's your take? Are you in the Tom yeah. camp or the Nick camp? No, I mean, I listen, like I said last time, I the, the Colts are a good team, and I think the Bills are ready to – will be ready to play. Uh, do I think the Pats will be ready to play? Yeah, I think they will be too. It will just be a matter of is it going to be like uh, tit for tat? Is it going to be score for score? Or is the defense going to be there to, to, shut, um, uh, to shut Josh Allen down? I think we lost Tom for a second. Yeah. But uh, – it's all good. He'll be back. Or like, that's just him. He left his point and dropped the mic. He's over. Yep. But uh, yeah, I think, I don't know. I, th I think the Patriots can pull it out. I just think it's going to take a lot because I think the Bills are going to throw the kitchen sink at you because I think they want that division. And um, the Patriots are, are still second and they could still technically take the AFC if they wanted, but they need some help. But yeah, they, I agree with Tom. I think they had that game. Even at the end, I was watching, uh, back and forth and it went down to the basement to do some stuff and I was listening on the radio and it was crazy like towards the end of the third and into the fourth you had it you had it you had you like you were driving you had two drives you had a takeaway you had a great takeaway with Devin McCourty and then you you stopped him on first down it was right before the two minute warning and you had a timeout and then all of a sudden bam Jonathan Taylor first was, the dog's right the dog knows burst right through and then the game was over. Despite all that, despite all that, you still were in that game. Despite like all those mistakes. <laughs> those... <laughs> Sorry, Paul. That's all right. I got a monster underneath my seat. Right Wait, you got We got to see him. We got to see him. We got to no. see him. My goodness, he hasn't made his face to facts appearance yet, has he? No, he hasn't. Well, let me see if I can get this little. Yeah, I, I like your points, Phil. So, uh, so you're saying that you're on the defense, then, is what you're saying. I uh, the defense. <laughs> hi everybody, I'm a little, little bit. Pun, pun intended. Pun intended. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, hi, I'm on everybody. defense. Uh, no, I. But listen, I the deep and also the defense only allowed. Hi everybody. Uh, I guess twenty points. Well, I guess they like thirteen points until like that. Um, uh, that burst from Jonathan Taylor. And, you know, you can't blame the defense on a block punt. No, but I want to I want to further add to your point, Phil, about how they uh, started actually playing, playing Indy um, in the fourth quarter. Yeah. And I. Oh, you cut out there, Tom. And JJ can replace Tom. Any... Yeah. Oh, go ahead. What was that, Tom? Oh no, he's done. He's mute. We'll never know. We'll never know how he's going to reinforce. No, the whole, the, oh, the, the first, the first three quarter, the first three quarters of the game were, you know, a, a bore. They were a um, Dave O'Brien for the Patriots, and then oh. the fourth quarter, um, they came out. They came out like the team that we've seen in the first what fifteen, uh -huh. well, thirteen weeks, I guess. Um, so I, I think what we saw in the fourth quarter is going to be what we're going to see this weekend against the Bills, but obviously a little better and more prepared. Again, I just I hope I'm wrong. I want Phil and Tom to be correct on this. Hopefully we are as, before we wrap up 
Uh, you know, our, our, I don't even know if we have a show next week because I'm sure Phil's off or something from New Year's. But when we talk about, no, I I will be um, here. I'll be here next week. So we will have a game update for you <laughs> and wrap up our show for the last time in 2021. Believe it or not, um, and figure out where things are headed. Again, we have two more weeks to go with Patriots action after this game on Sunday, which will be Jacksonville and Miami. So we'll see how things look. Um, before we head into 2022, we want to wish everybody a merry, merry, merry Christmas to all of you out there. Um, for uh, everybody out there who continues to watch and listen, we appreciate everybody out there who um, uh, supports us and does uh, and views all of our shows and everything for Face to Facts. So for Nick Face, Tom Smith, and Phil Healy, and the biting dinosaur right here. We will see you next time on another episode of Face the Facts. See you later.